Wait a minute. Okay. So in setup, this is just creation. There's no laser, but there's creation. Uh, there's a creation of uh, of a uh, bean. So what happens here? New CRUD service bean is just a Java bean with CRUD service set entity manager. This project it was a funny one because it was it was it was last year. It was entirely built with POJOs. Why? Because of lightweight architectures. And my job was to migrate the project from Flash, because of iPhone, to HTML. And they told me, this is a small project, just do it. And I, and I look at the source base, it was amazing. Everything was a POJO, but you built everything from scratch. So they had transactions, persistence, DAOs, free layers, and factories, indirections, and all the patterns from Gengo 4, of course. So uh, after introducing one service boundary of EGB and some entities, I was able to remove 80% of the code. And I have still bad, bad feeling because I deleted the whole stuff and it works perfectly. But my customer yeah, is pretty happy. So okay, it works and who cares? It's like, yeah, who cares? But the, the, the last project was built, I don't know, in three years. And I came with, in eight weeks, delete everything and everyone is happy. And this is, uh, this is actually <coughs> the real code from the project. It's like, um, it's like an online store, but there's a um, very important one for the customer. Yeah? It, uh, yeah, it is not live now, but it will be soon. In UK is the launch. Okay. Um, so hard to test. As I said, EGB3 are just annotated POJO, so you can test them as such. Um, in other projects, what I did, I play a little bit with reflection, and you can very easily inject fields which are private. Okay? So there is no big deal you can inject private fields. So there's no slides, but if you are interested, come afterwards, I have enough code to, to show you. So, um, and then you can test the EGB. So, um, be careful, don't build your own embedded container because this line of code is EGB 3.1. And this is already existing in the glass with 3.1, it's not entirely implemented, but I think they have to be ready in June the second because it's Java one and the Glassfish launch is a Java one. What it does mean, you can you can create, you can fire up the container in process, in setup of a unit test. So the EGB container dot create EGB container creates an EGB container in process outside the container of course, and starts it. So you can say you are crazy. You're starting a container. You remember 700, 700 kilobytes. So I played. This is about one second, and it's done. Yeah. Or we <laughs> we saw yesterday on my machine zero seconds. Everything was zero second. But I guess your EGBs are heavyweight, so you have to wait one second or something like this. Yeah. So um, you get back the context. So context is not a fun because story. Uh, but the problem is JNDI belongs to JDK, so it's not it's not possible to change it very much. And the second line, the last one, is very, very important. Java, colon global, slash EGB jar name, bean name. It is, um, it is a global naming of EGBs. You will be able to globally name the EGBs and refer to local interfaces, remote interfaces, or no interfaces at all. This is a huge step because this is the last remaining part which makes EGBs totally portable. Right now, the JNDI names are not portable because in Glassfish there's fully qualified remote interface, in JBoss is bean slash local, and BA is a weird thing. Like uh, I don't know, it's just totally weird. Yeah. So um. So. Okay. So I have never problems with testing EGBs. Not only me, but neither my, my, my team neither. And and the problems we had always problems with testing good tests. So this is all, it's always a problem, but not a testing EGBs in particular now. And later, you can boot up the whole container. And if you are using open EGB, you can just do it now. Open EGB from Geronimo, you can, you can uh, boot it in embedded mode. But if you wait a uh, few weeks, you will be able to boot every container you want to in process because of EGB 3.1. It, uh, it was standard, what I show you. OK, EGB are not portable. So this was the next stuff. OK. You, um, you are building something and you are totally dependent on Glassfish, IBM, uh, WebLogic, Geronimo, on who knows, who knows what. So the problem was J2U14 was too easy. Yeah, this is the, the truth. Because there was no mentioning, locking, optimistic concurrency, and everything else was just not specified. And the impact was every uh, vendor invented their own extensions. So there was a uh, JBoss had something like eager loading, BA named not eager loading, of course, on find the load spin. There was another flag. 
So, uh, and the result was you could forgot completely to uh, migrate an application from JTU14, uh, uh, JTU14 application from IBM to WebSphere, from WebSphere to, uh, from to WebSphere, it will work probably, but from <laughs> WebSphere to WebLogic or from WebLogic to Glassfish. And uh, this was fixed. So Java A5 spec, everyone is excited, but it's actually more complicated because everything is standardized. But if everything is standardized, there is no more room for vendor-specific extensions. So now you can easily port whatever you want. So you can develop on Glassfish, put it to JBoss, from JBoss to WebLogic, and from WebLogic to IBM. It will work. So the portability story is really, really great. The only problem is whether it will behave as we expect in production. For instance, you, has, you have always to test the persistence because, it, you know, OpenJPA is a little bit different to, hi to Hibernate and Hibernate to Toplink. So this is the real issue in production. But from the portability story, it's just great. And what we did, just what we are able to, to do, we are able to, uh, we are, we are able to, um, to get better prices for commercial server just because of the fact. We say, okay, you are kidding me, it's too expensive. If you do not get a good price, we can move to JBoss or Glassfish. So it's uh, also very good for, for strategic reasons. So vendor-specific uh, deployment descriptors are basically gone. So in EJB jar, there is no XML descriptors. And there is nothing vendor-specific in here. So in all my projects, there was no Sun EJB jar or JBoss.xml or WebLogic, nothing. It's just pure spec, and it works. So this is agreed. Questions? No questions? Everyone is happy? OK. EJBs are not extensible. So this is, uh, yeah. So what it is, you know Juice? Juice is a very cool framework. So it's, I like it because, because Juice is even smaller than EGB, 324 kilobytes. And the uh, spec, the whole spec from Juice are 20, 23 pages. And so, and this is a great story. Something as 23 pages is simple, no? But the Juice does not come with transaction support and stuff like this. So we need extensions in Juice to do that. But Juice as dependency injection is really great stuff. What I thought is, okay, now I have one EGB, service facade bean, and I would like to inject a message provider. And you see the strange annotation at inject has nothing to do with EGB, it's a juice annotation. So I would like to inject, inject juice beans into EGBs, just as proof of concept. So what I have to do, you see the first strange thing is this one interceptor stack here, per method juice injector, I build this and I will show you how it, how it looks like. First, I have to configure juice. I like it as well because this is very fluent. You can say bind the bind message provider to message provider impl as singleton, for instance, and eagerly. So it's a very fluent way of, uh, of configuring framework. So this is just juice. And, uh, and this is my interceptor. I have one interceptor with a lifecycle listeners called post construct. And what I do there, I create my juice injector, create, uh, create injector. New, new messaging module, you see it? And on every method call around invoke, I inject members to my bean because I get a reference to the EGB. Having that, I can inject whatever I want with juice, spring, whatever you want. There's a great, uh, there's, there are no limits, okay? You get, you get the reference, you see invocation get target, this line, invocation get target. In the invocation get target, you get the reference to the real bean, you can inject whatever you want. This is actually how Seam works behind the scenes. There's an interceptor, it juice, and juice injects, you know, the scopes, this in, out, and everything else. Just a proof of concept. Okay? Agreed? You have a laser or something like this? Pointer? Yeah, then now, but because in one hour or so. Uh, for the next, oh, shit, yeah, okay. So interceptors are able to access the beam directly. You can do whatever you want, and you can, yeah, you can use uh, legacy frameworks to inject things. Yeah, this looks, you know, somehow. Yeah, it should be like that. Yeah. 